this is where they do the big motors. Do we got anything in the machine? Run it right now. Perfect. So Tim, this is a big old grinder right here, huh? Yeah, this is their Dinobat turbine housing grinder. They actually run the housings through here when they're doing a rebuild to get things ground back down to spec. Okay. Well, very tight tolerance like everything else on a jet engine. This thing is precise to the point where it sits on a 10 foot thick concrete pad to isolate it even from vibrations in the next room. That's how accurate they like to hold the tolerances and the fit on these parts. The tighter the tolerance, the more power the engine makes because everything on this, it's about air leaks. And if you have too much gap between the turbine blades and the housing anywhere, then you have an air leak, then you don't make as much thrust, you don't make as much power. It's essentially less efficient, like a regular car engine that's not running right. This has to be absolutely perfect. When this thing is finished grinding, I can see you only have a few tents now. How do you inspect it? Well, this is a special machine. I mean, there's only a few of these in the world. The CNC controllers move the head out of the way, and they're going to move a, a basically a CMM inspection arm down to check the turbine, just like you would on your regular CNC machine with a, a basic touch probe. And this is like cargo airplanes that you're making these for, and I fly all the time, so I already feel safer. There you go. Right? It's just like the plane it's precision. that you fly. Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> it's like a CMM. It's just like at our shop when Sean uses a CMM to come down and probe the part, make sure it's perfect. This machine has a built-in probing system that's gonna come down and actually inspect the part right in the machine. So as soon as it's finished being inspected, this is gonna go back over to the assembly room. They'll put this together and eventually it'll get back over onto the airplane. But right now, why don't we head over and we'll take a look at the assembly room and where this goes. All right, let's go check it let's out. Let's go. My name's Rich Bray. I'm the director of power plants for Coletta Air. I've been working for Connie Coletta since 1995 when I retired from the United States Air Force. We actually take care of building all the engines for Connie's fleet of 747s. See the blade tip here? So what happens is, is you actually have these blade tips the same here. So what we're gonna do is cut these down so that that shroud that you saw being cut over there actually runs like this up against the shroud. And so we cut these down so that the dimension remains in the 10,000th clearance area, even as it runs. So you guys pretty much do all your own engines? Oh yeah. yeah. How much are one of the blades, Rich? Mm, I think those are $6,500 a piece. And I think these are about $7,800 a piece. These are individual. Individual pieces at right, like 6,500 bucks a piece. So you can, and if one gets damaged, you could actually replace one. Just take one. it out, unbolt it, take it out, put a new one in and then relock it. But this is not rocket science either. You take anybody with mechanical ability and you can teach them how to do this. Yeah. Who'd ever think I'd have a fleet of 747s then to be able to take care of them all? We do everything. Our job is to turn a product that gives Connie the most efficient engine to put on wing, to use the least amount of fuel, to gain the best EGT margins so that we can move freight around the world from the United States to the troops overseas and back to folks right here in the United States. So in this portion of the shop right here is where we actually do the balance. So the HPT that you saw being ground, the case, would match up with the stages that we saw, mm -hmm. first and second stage blades. Yeah. And we'll put it on this machine and we will check balance front plane to rear plane. What's the, what's the tolerance you guys are dealing with? Well, we're running at about 600 RPM and the machine actually tells us where the bullseye is. In other words, where we wanna be with a balance and you work in moment weight area, so we're talking like the weight of a hair. So it actually pinpoints it to a zero vibration area and a perfect balance. So in this portion of the shop right here is where we actually do the balance. This machine, we actually take those fan blades. Mm -hmm. We take a fan blade, we put it in this jig, and then the computer looks at each blade that we've put in, and as you can see, they're numbered. Mm -hmm. Once they're in the machine, the machine tells us where we're actually gonna put those in the hub so that we get a balance out of the run from the beginning. 
The importance of putting this engine together front to rear properly is paramount. If we don't do our job correctly, then this engine could fail on wing prematurely and there's no place to pull a 747 off the side of the road at 30,000 feet to make a fix. So what we do here at Titan is we bring the engines in, we stage them in each bay. Each bay will have a little bit of something different going on. These two bays that you see here, we're swapping external parts from engine to engine for an engine run. This bay over here, we have an engine that is missing the high pressure turbine. The piece that you were looking at in the machine shop mm -hmm. that's being ground, once it's ground, the assembly will be brought and attached to the engine. Behind these nozzle guide vanes is a combustor. It's just one huge compressor. And instead of a piston combustion engine, it's a compressor combustion engine. So it- A fan that can flip cars though, right? It can right? flip cars, absolutely. So we suck the air in, we squeeze it, we ignite it, that's the bang. Yeah. Then it blows and then it goes, and that's thrust. Awesome. And then when it's together, and I'll show you an engine that's ready for test, that engine from front to back has went through the process of disassembly, clean, inspect, repair, reassembly, ready for test. We produce approximately 35 of our own engines each year in this facility, and we do customer engines as well. And we're responsible from the fan to the turbine rear frame on this engine, in this building, and on the JT9, JT8, CFM56, and another engine. All those engines are then tested at our test facility on the other side of the base here, where we run the engines to thrust and test all their margins and airflows for efficiency. This engine's ready for test. This is an ADC2 General Electric. And this one actually has the fan blades installed. This is what produces 75 to 80% of the thrust for each engine for the aircraft. So multiply this by four and a top thrust rating, you're over 62,000 pounds of thrust. And so it takes the air in and that of course has to be sustained somehow. That's sustained with the core engine back here. And so once this thing is lit, it's gonna stay lit like a candle until you blow it out or remove the fuel. That's incredible. I'm like in awe. And so that's what we do here in our world at Coletta Air is make sure best product every time, every day, American proud, American right. Titan, this is the Coletta Air engine test cell. This is what they call a 10 meter test cell because of the width and the size of it. They use this for testing all the engines after they get them out of the shop. This whole platform lowers down, hooks up to the engine. Yeah. They take it back up, close the engine cowls. All the air from the inlet side comes through those louvers, through the engine, and the exhaust out through the tailpipe. It gives us a chance to actually run the engines to make sure that all the parameters are correct so it'd be just like it was on an airplane. If you've got the right amount of thrust, your temperatures are good, it just checks everything out. So Connie Coletta, actually built this facility so he could test his own engines. If he wasn't doing it himself, he'd probably have to pay somebody else to do it. He'd essentially have to send it out to another shop and Connie likes doing stuff in, in house, so he decided to build himself a test cell. So like he said, controlling his own destiny, right? right? Absolutely. So good. If you got 10,000 horsepower on a top fuel, what kind of horsepower do you have on something like this, 747 engine? The 747 GE engine runs about 60,000 pounds of thrust. 60,000 pounds. What is that in horsepower in English? Well, I think that's, uh, let's see, it's probably about 90,000 horsepower. Is that 90,000? I think, yeah, I think I saw somewhere it's about one and a half horsepower to a pound of thrust. It's not direct, but it's a lot of power. Awesome. This place is incredible.